a man who had the misfortune to play alongside Big Meeks. A man who had the good fortune to go on many a night out with Big Meeks. He's now an England coach with uh, Lee Carsley. A warm welcome to Jolian Lescott, who appears to be in a prison cell. Looking good. How are you, Jolian? Thanks for doing this. I'm good, thanks. No problem at all. Thanks for having me on. Great to have you on. Because considering I know pretty much all of you, I know Meeks yeah. really well, I'm... I'm Disappointed it took so long to get me out, <laughs> Well, we've been trying. <laughs> Not very hard. What we thought we'd do, we'd wait till you're an England coach. Okay, <laughs> makes sense. Micah said he did ask you, but you kept on saying no. You've been lying, Micah. Never asked me. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to start with 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 England because um, obviously you've 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 started there now. You were part of the setup before with the under twenty ones with um, Lee Carsley and Ashley Cole. How big a buzz is it being part of um, the first team with England? Oh, it's wild, to be honest. Yeah, when when obviously I was a, I was aware of it just before it obviously got announced, and I, I did mention it to Meeks, it was possible, and then he announced it for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do not tell him any secrets. Um, but yeah, so obviously I was aware that it was potential if Lee got the um, the opportunity. Um, so it was like surreal. It was, it was probably like a bigger buzz than, than when you get the call-up as a player. I think you probably expected it more as a player. Um, you can obviously monitor how you, well you're doing and uh, how, how close you are to it, but this was just kind of out the blue and it was like yeah mm. surreal feeling yeah well, it didn't take you long to say yes I presume oh yeah there was it was a definite yes definitely yeah and and I presume um I'm for sure that um Lee and and the rest of you would would love to take the thing on full time yeah obviously um obviously there's a long way to go for that to be a possibility but mm. I'm sure um Lee wants the opportunity to do it longer term and again for, for you guys that know football it's probably less of a surprise, but I think for people that was questioning the decision or the, the appointment, uh, it makes me more frustrated that last year's tournament wasn't documented to a bigger degree because I don't think it would be a surprise to anyone. Um, like watching the team play and perform, I don't think it would be a surprise that Lee would be given the opportunity to to manage the, the seniors. Tell us what his style of football is Jen. we've seen a couple of in games now with with the the full first team and there's obviously um a very different feel to it than Gareth Southgate's um the under 21 side he, he seems to have um, the confidence of the players what is the style the style um it's just to control um even when you're out of position i think he wants to control the, the game really um and he's aware that obviously teams need to suffer uh, at times um but you can still be relatively comfortable um, out of possession. And I think that uh, it's important that he is that, but to play with freedom. Um, I think everyone says it, but um, having worked with Lee um, and hearing him talk to players and engage with, with squads, um, I've said it before that I've never seen in, in my whole career of football, I've never seen a group of players um, like have that connection with a coach. Even when you're not in the team, you, you have it um, and he does it in such a, an informal way. It's so relaxed. So, yeah, um, if you don't kind of gravitate to that, then I, I don't know what would motivate you because, as I said, he's so comfortable telling you to, that you've done well or you are a great player. And I think that's hard for a lot of coaches nowadays, mm. especially in my career. It was like, I don't remember, I don't remember many coaches telling me I did well just telling me what I needed to do to improve. And I think now, especially this generation, um, we respond better to, to praise. Jolan, tell us what the atmosphere was like when you, you went into the England camp, this England camp, not with the under-21s, because we saw them get to a final. We saw them that they were criticised at times, even by the three of us, um, for not playing well despite getting to a final. Tell us what the atmosphere was like amongst the players when you first went in there, you and the manager. What did you have to do? What did you have to say to get them on side, etc.? Um, well, Lee had to obviously address them more than, than anyone. I think he spoke to players before we met up, but I think it was important that there was fresh faces there as well because then they're not attached to that stigma. 
um, just just with seeing Angel Gomez and, and Morgan mm-hmm. Gibbs White, like their face, they had no recollection of what the summer was. It was like their first call up, so there was a lot of that. Um, and the players that have worked with him, obviously, were excited to to see him and us. Um, but again, the, the players like Harry Kane, John Stones were obviously devastated, which you can imagine. Um, but also respectful that it was a new period and they've gone through ups and downs in their career. So it wasn't as hard as you may think to to motivate anyone. Right. Um, it's It was Harry Kane's one, um, camp that he was going to play his 100th yep. game for England. So again, that is motivation within itself. Do you know what I mean? So, and, and I'm going to give a shout out to, to Ashley Cole, who, who has took on the role as a coach, like beyond my wildest dreams, because as knowing Ash and Meeks knows him as well, and you guys will know him as a, as a player, you probably didn't yeah. see him going into coaching, but he loves it. He's obsessed and he gives two speeches before the games. And it was like, I wanted to put my boots up and, and go again. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, again, it, it's not as, as hard as you may think to motivate players that want to play for England. With Lee Carsley, that, that, I suppose in many ways, there's, you could look at the Spanish team and, um, with De La Fuente he's, he's came through he came through in, in similar circumstances and they gave him the job and there was a lot of doubt um, around Spain about that but um, ultimately it proved a, a, a masterful um, appointment and he's done well so th- th- you know does it, Lee Carsley go in there it must have been I don't know it must be quite intimidating the first day there particularly when you've not kind of managed lots of club sides and you know you've you've created your name that way whereas you've come through the ranks but I suppose it would also have helped him that he would have worked with some of those players oh yeah he's worked with most of them to be honest um and some that weren't there um so obviously Harry Kane the older players I don't think he's worked with mm. um but that's why he he has the likes of, of me Tim who's worked with every goalkeeper that was there, Tim Dittmar, Ash, obviously, is actually Cole. And even if he hadn't worked with them, he's, he's still done what they want to achieve in the game. And I was familiar with a few of them, but then the likes of Cole, Phil and Jude, he's all worked with at, at junior level. So there's not going to be many fresh faces mm. that he hasn't worked with. And the ones that he hasn't are experienced enough to, to get on with the job anyway. So again, the balance was... Is, uh, and it is, is pretty good. What they like is a, a bunch of lads, the, the players. Everyone wants to know that, don't they? Yeah, good. It's a lot different from when I was there. Me and Ash were talking about this. That they socia- How? they How? socialise a lot together. Um, and they spend a lot of time together. It was very regimented when we were there. Like, you, you came down for dinner at seven. You had to sit there for an hour. So it was like, there was no phones. And as great as that, as, as people may think, for that, especially now, if you haven't got your phone, you like Meeks didn't have his phone for an hour yesterday. He was devastated. He was panicking and sweating because <laughs> he was at this event. But if you have your phone, you're you're most likely to socialise for longer. Do you know what I mean? So it's recognising them things, and this isn't things that Lee and, and we've done. This is the environment that Gareth has created. So there was a lot of like um, crossover from what he's created. It wasn't just going in there clean slate and it's a new style of football. It's a new environment. He's like, no, this is what has worked for so long and just keeping that really. There's an incredible talent base um, in that England squad. It, 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 it must be something to, to watch that amount of talent. It must also be very encouraging as, as, as you look ahead to, to being able to work with those players. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just to see them and again, like I've, I've worked at Manchester City Academy and then you progress to first team levels and you see the talent, but the, the professionalism of wanting to be the best day in, day out is is the difference. And I think that's what most people won't recognise is that training isn't just going through the motions. It's, no, we're, we're maxed out here. Yeah, we're, we're giving as, as as much as we can give. And yeah, you, you generally see in training the, the kind of qualities because it's against the same level in the greatest respect when you're playing opposition, you're preparing against to play against opposition. And this isn't, um, a criticism to, to Ireland and Finland. We had this at 21s. It was it's probably harder to prepare for them games because you're prepared against the same level that you're you have at your disposal. So trying to break down Finland in training could potentially be harder than trying to break down Finland in the game because you're in training it's John Stones and Ezu Kanza and Rico Lewis rather than in, in the games it's not that level in the greatest respect to them. So as you said, you get to see the, the full-on concentration and quality. 
from a coach's lens, from your lens, Jolien, who's the most talented? You've got Cole Palmer, you've got Foden, you've got Bellingham. <laughs> And don't give me some politically correct answer. We don't want this on on, on, oh. on our podcast. We want we want yeah, insight. Wrong. We want we want he's we in want... a serious role now, though. He has to be careful. <laughs> I don't care. I can't, give you, I can't give you that answer now because Cole and Phil and Jude weren't in the camp. Like I can only give you Cole because I know Cole from the twenty ones. Like I can't tell you what it's going to be like for them. Like maybe after the next camp, if they're selected, then yeah, if they're fit enough, then. Get me back on. Do you know what I mean? But uh, for now, in terms of the talent that I've seen, yeah, it was uh, it's hard because they've all obviously they've all got talent. But for me, Saka and Kane let me know they were world class, not just by their talent. I think everyone can see that. I think it was their consistency. It was like to see Bakayo Saka control it, and as simple as it sounds, correctly make the right decisions not nine to ten times out of ten every time if you showed him inside he was going to get a shot for a cross if you showed him down the line he would go down the line and do the same thing and it was just like seeing that is like oh that's why you're world class is because you are super consistent not necessarily because you can do the most tricks or whatever it was just like you make the right decisions all the time I imagine Harry Kane's quite good at the finishing <laughs> session. Yeah, he's not bad. He knows, he knows what he's doing to be fair. Yeah, and, and there's a couple of times I'm like, that's not a chance. And it, then you realise it's a chance for, for Harry Kane. It's probably not a chance for 90% of forwards in the world. But for him, he will be, be able to, to control it, adjust his body, and then all of a sudden you hear the net ripple. So, yeah, th them kind of the things are the standout moments. And it's for, and again, I don't want to sound disrespectful, so, people that haven't played, but if you've played, you can just recognise that that is a Harry Kane chance rather than a chance for every striker or mm. something that Trent does. That's not a normal situation. That's not a pass that everyone can make. Not everyone can see, but obviously for Trent, it's an easy, it's an easy thing to do. Well, before you, before you ask a question, Al, there's a, we, we have a regular bay and sometimes we basically get questions from fans and everyone says, who's better, Lineker, Shearer, or Harry Kane. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. Play one, bench one, <laughs> and sell one. Let me give you a bit of advice on yeah. the team before, <laughs> before you start. Harry Kane's in your squad and we're yeah. Yeah. So we know we know yeah. you're gonna yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I knew that yeah. before and this was a free podcast, so definitely <laughs> oh, I love it. But, uh, yeah. Um, okay, okay, we've got Harry Kane number one. Which, Kane number one. which one of these two Herberts are you selling? <laughs> and which one are you keeping? <laughs> In today's market, the profit are reaching a, a bit of value, so it doesn't matter you sell, you, you're going to get a good turn back. I'm going to go for... I, I think... Oh! This is, this is, this is, I don't want to say this matter. <laughs> I think I'll get a better response as Gary as as a sub, so I'll sell Alan. Oh, yes! And, and finally, finally, someone who knows what he's talking I think about. Alan's a starter. That's why. Yeah, I don't think you're, he's you're absolutely right. You wouldn't put me on the fucking bench for sure. <laughs> I lose my job. I lose my job like Rude. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sell him quick, Johnny. Get him out. Get him out. He's nothing. He's nothing. He's nothing but trouble. Alan, you're going to ask a question. Just another one on, on England. I mean, not only for Lee as the manager, but for you and for Ash and the other guys. I mean, this is an incredible opportunity, isn't it? I mean, you, 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 you're talking about. You could potentially go on and win a World Cup with this squad, given the opportunity, that the likelihood <laughs> that you're going to get, you guys well, are going to get. No pressure. So there you go. Like, I'm not even thinking that far ahead. That, listen, if yeah. you get the job full time, or if Lee gets the job and he wants to keep me, then mm. 100% that would be the goal, and it should be. I mean, that's but, how good this team is, though, as good an opportunity that it might be for all of you guys, isn't it? Oh, definitely. We have to think that, but we can't look too far ahead. We have. We know the importance of the next two camps if we're in charge. I know we, obviously we're going to get the next two games and then hopefully after November, there's a decision made for, for John um, and Lee's done enough to, to warrant him keeping the job. But yeah, if that is the outcome to this little interim period, of course, the goal is to win the World Cup and it should be because, like you said, the quality of players is, is ridiculous. Can you make us a promise? 
If no, no, I can't get you tickets. <laughs> you don't tickets right? don't, we can get tickets. <laughs> We've got enough sponsors to cover that. We don't need tickets. Um, we need the uh, team lineups before anyone else. The inside, no. we need the inside. I can't tell you a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell Gary and Alan. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe. I'm gonna set you I'm a not... couple of red herrings and see how um, much you know, it leaks out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. See the leakies, exactly. see the leakies. Yeah. I tell you all that red herring plays well on the left <laughs> wing. He's really, I, he's, I like him. He's pro- uh, you're talking about talent then. You just, you, you mentioned Trent Alexander-Arnold and I think he, might be kind of one of the big differences between the previous incumbent and Lee Carsley is that I don't think Gareth ever trusted Trent Alexander-Arnold, but Lee's come in, he's boshed him straight in the side. He's been incredibly impressive in both those games. Is that a fair comment, do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Again, the comment about Gareth, if he trusts him, I don't know. But yeah, Lee obviously trusts him to do what he yeah. wants to do and, and the way he wants to play. He allows his, the fullbacks to do that role and Trent is one of the best at doing that. So he definitely has an element of trust in his ability. Um, and it's just recognising or exposing players to what they're good at more than what they're not good at. Whatever Trent's weakness is, or what are his strengths, let's get him in them areas more so than, than that and, and make that position think about combating that because I think not, not no, no criticism on Gav, just coaches in general can look at the opposition and think, well, how do we stop them? How do we not lose rather than how do we win? And as I said, working with Lee, he's focused on, well, how do we get the, the players in the positions that they operate the best? And I said it to, to Meeks numerous times, when we played in the Euros and two ones, like we played Cole as a deep line midfielder. So when we seen him on the ball for Chelsea and everyone's like, oh, wow, I'm like, I've, I've seen that. Like he loves the ball and he's able to operate in small areas close to his own goal. And I, I was obviously covering some of the games and, in the summer, and I was saying, Phil can do that. Phil could drop down and receive the ball in the build up, and then all of a sudden you're in opposition half out of nothing. So, Kars obviously has a, an eye to recognise what players are, are their strength or what strips are players are. Is it quite, it must be quite an interesting and difficult um, circumstance to be in here in terms of you, you, you kind of the interim team uh, with England. So, you can't quite be sure of what the future holds. You you also know that if you keep winning games, that's going to massively increase the chances. It must be a slightly odd situation to be in as a as a coaching team. Yeah or no. I think what helps is that they're not friendlies. Like National League games have an impact on how you qualify or where you're ranked in the qualifying and what part you go into for the World Cup. So the fact that there's so many kind of games means you, obviously you're going to take them serious mm-hmm. anyway, but the players come in there with a different mentality as well. So, if, I think if it was friendlies, it kind of may give you an opportunity to experiment or whatever, and players may want to miss um, the games and, and clubs have an impact. But the fact that it's there's something at stake um, has helped everyone just regain their focus and, and reapply themselves. Your upbringing, I, I didn't realise that you had a, a horrific accident when you were five. When I did the research for this, um, you know, I, I, you got hit by a car at five yeah. years old. Yeah, I was leaving school um, and was crossing the road and a lollipop lady was next to her and she put out the sign as they do. And I was on her right hand side. She stepped out. I stepped out. She recognised the car wasn't stopping. So she mm. stepped back, but I was already out in the road and literally my mum was mm. opposite watching. Mm. So oh my god. And then got hit by the car, um, dragged down the road a little bit and yeah, ended up with, with scars and stuff. Was in a coma for, for a while, um in the hospital for a longer while. Uh and then just in and out of hospital for for what uh around, I think my last operation I was 15 so yeah my last operation was head operation was about obviously 15. never affected you physically in terms of playing sport no or it may have done for a while or- yeah i don't i don't know to be honest um yeah. i honestly don't know the impact of that it's not something I, t- I tend to dwell in that aspect of it because it can obviously my parents sort of saying stuff like that but in regards to to the impact physically no um and it was crazy i've, I've said this before like there was a guy next to me in, 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 uh, on the ward 
who just had a bandage on his head and then took it off. He just had like a little scar on his eyebrow. Um, but he'd never, he was always sleeping or I was in a coma, obviously. And then when I asked my mum, what, what's the story there? She said, he got hit by a wing mirror. Like a van was going past, he was on the curb and a wing mirror hit him oh, and give him brain damage. And he had the smallest scar and I'm there with like bandages everywhere, blood mm. and scars and stitches. And I'm like, I'm okay. So as much as the scars have, have brought attention, it's, I'll take that then. Mm. He's outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, Jolene, you, you're a Brummie. Which, which which was your team support as as a boy? Villa. Villa was my team. You are uh, Villa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that ended up abruptly, to be fair. Uh, well, no, Mike, was, Mike is now holding his head in his hands. <laughs> I still, I, I'm still getting the blame for that. <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be fair, my brother played, um, I was there as a school of excellence then and youth team and stuff. So uh, we, we were Villa fans and my uncle used to take us to the games and we got the tickets. And then, I, I, to be fair, I followed Villa up until I went to Everton. And then when Everton and Villa at the time were competing for the same league positions, I, I started wishing them well. Obviously, I still had a connection with them. And growing up, it was the only team I wanted to play for was Aston Villa. Hang, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. So while you were at Wolves, yeah, yeah, I was still you st still follow Villa. Still, yeah, yeah, Villa was still your team. Well, we were in the championship, so it didn't really matter. Do you know what I mean? It, like yeah. we were, we was never going to impact their outcome. We played them in a preseason friendly, which was unreal uh, for me. Like playing against them, my brother was playing for them as well. So yeah, that was a, a mad occasion for the family. But yeah, up until I literally went to Everton, I was I was a Villa fan, and then kind of had to stop. Stop wishing them well. Like, like I've said, Meeks knows. Like, Gareth Barry is like a real hero of mine. Do you know what I mean? Like, Gareth Barry, Hugo Reki, South, Gareth Southgate to an extent as well. And, and obviously, the time there. Julian, on Wednesday in our QA, uh, we got asked about um, with Rodri doing his cruciate ligament now. I did my cruciate ligament. You had similar sort of injury, didn't you? Yeah. How did it affect you at all? How injury time or whatever it was? What? Yeah, I was lucky, to be fair. My mindset was pretty simple. Of, like, I knew it was serious injury. Um, I was told if I do these things to recover, there'll be no pain. And then I thought, if there's no pain, then I have no excuse not to perform how I did before. So I kind of just used that process to to get through it and it definitely made me a better professional because up until like I got injured at 21 and up until that I was just playing on the talent that I had I was mm. naturally quite strong and could yeah. do certain things but then after that it was like oh I was a little bit overweight and I needed to work on my hip movements and stuff like that so then it helped me a lot to be honest it recognized I recognized that there was another level to to just playing football rather than um just playing on the talent how did Wolves come about? Wolves, lo local Sunday team. So my Sunday team played in the Birmingham League and uh, Birmingham League was like, the, the level of talent was high, but the the seriousness, like you turn up and one team would have eight players. Like it, it wasn't that, but the eight players might give the 11 a good game. Do you know what I mean? But we had a good team and then our coach was like, well, we, we want to play every week rather than twice a month because the opposition don't turn up. So we moved leagues. We moved into the work of Wolverhampton-ish league. So it's a lot further for us to travel, but and we kind of dominated the league, but we knew it was consistent. And then there was a lot more scouts there. And then, yeah, I was playing as a midfielder then and got yeah. scouted as a midfielder and then mm -hmm. went to Wolves. And then their centre-half missed a few weeks, so they put me back to centre-half. And I was like, oh, I don't enjoy this. So I stopped going. I stopped playing for... About a year, year and a half. And then, <laughs> yeah, I just said, nah, I just don't want to play. <laughs> I just want to play in midfield and run around and yeah. do all that stuff. And then, so that was like under 14s and 15s. And then under 16s, like last year of school, we, my our school team was pretty decent. We all went off for a trial uh, to Derby and we all went there. And I got into the, like the first, like the open trial, which was loads of just trialists. And then they selected a group of trialists to play the academy team. And at that age, like their style was a striker. And uh I did well against him. I, and I'm not this time I know now I'm a setter off. If I'm gonna have a career, I'm not I'm not a midfielder. So I need to how did, how did you how did you know you were a centre half? How does that 
I mean, I, as I think when you're young, when most kids want to play up front, we've scored goals and yeah. they kind of always stayed there. But you, you were a midfielder, and then, then what made you think actually, actually, you know what? I think I am a centre half. I just think I recognised that I was, as much as I didn't enjoy it as much, I was better there for the teams I was playing for. Like my coach at the time, uh, school coach said we played a massive school game at Villa Park. Um, we got to like national championships and it was like the first time our school had represented or our team had represented the school. And I was like, I'm playing in midfield. He was like, you're going to play at the back. You've got to play at the back. I was like, no. I said, if I play at the back, I'm not playing. So I played in, <laughs> so if I played in midfield and we lost. And their like, main guy was the striker. So it was uh, like, he wasn't blaming me, but he's like, you're gonna, if you want to take this serious, you're going to have to play at the back. And I, re- and I did respect him enough to take that on board. You probably owe him a owe him something don't you to prove <laughs> your career maybe you yeah, yeah. might not have found your um, your true role yeah, without I him yeah. I was just going to say and what what about playing with that clown Richards clown to be fair he's one of the few defenders that love defending as much as he could I bet, you, I bet you wish you had a stayed in midfield when you went and played alongside him <laughs> oh yeah oh some of the stories he was the quickest player I played with going forward, but coming back, mm. slow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, no. when we, remember when we played at West Brom, we, I think we were 10 men after like 15 minutes and they got Lukaku up front and we've, we've got a corner <laughs> and we're running back and I'm saying, Mix, run. Like, because I know Mix is faster than me, a lot faster, but I'm running past him and I'm saying, <laughs> Mix, get back. So I ended up in the right back area and he was 2v1, it was Lukaku. I can't remember who else. <laughs> He's just laughing. He's li- I can e- literally hear him laughing behind me as if to say, I'm not helping you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not helping you. I was knackered. <laughs> this guy. I love it. it so many times. Big Mix doesn't like working too much. He's told us that. He can't do two days running, let alone running forwards and backwards. <laughs> Micah, defend yourself. Come on. No, I mean... Um... He's he's absolutely right. I, I I loved going forward when I was playing right back, but I just, I just I wasn't fit enough to go up and back regularly in the game. So I knew Jolin and company had it sewn up at the back. So I was just having fun, you know, enjoying myself. <laughs> um, but there's there's been many many moments with with me and Jolin. You know, I think we should go through a, a few of them. We had the um, can we can we talk about the tweet? Let, let's go with a tweet. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. We, we didn't forgot about that. That's why the <laughs> Villa fans don't like you. <laughs> no, yeah. One of the reasons. It's one of the reasons. We need to get Jack on to clear this up. Because, you know, like Jack has said, like, says to me all the time, like, I'm going to do a podcast and tell them that it was my fault. And I'm like, it's not it's not that deep, Jack, to be honest. Do you know what I mean? Like, Jack, you're talking Jack, Jack Grealish, yeah. presumably. So Jack this, was, this was when you were at Villa for people. Yeah, and oh, you, yeah. You, no, 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 you, no. You'd sent out a tweet for quite a flash motor car just after you'd been hammered for oh, playing for yeah. Villa. And I didn't, I yeah. wasn't the ones that, like now, I think everyone tweets after games, are oh, thanks to fans and all that. And I never yeah. did that anyway. Like, win, lose, or draw, I wasn't no, on that. No, even so, when you lose, you'd yeah, well, you, you much sooner post. Was, yeah, it was just yeah, one of them post things, a picture of a car. Yeah, so the car was... The car was a bit wild, but the, how it came about was Jack had sent it to me anyway. But and then me and Meeks were like driving home and then it, it kind of, my phone was blowing up. And it was like, what's going on? I was like, I, I don't know. I'm driving, so I don't know what's happened. But anyway, in regards to the car, it was funny because my mum was like, oh, you don't even have that car. I was like, I know, it's not mine. Like, it's a picture of on the internet. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just Google images the car that he wanted, Jack, and he, and he got it. Like, my mum was like, you should... Post a picture of your real car. I'm like, no, mum. There's a way. Like, I, I, I treated myself to a Rolls Royce. <laughs> so yeah. she was like, just post that. I was like, nah, it doesn't really work like that. I don't think they'll work like that. So I just left it. But again, I, I, I still, every, I post on, I will write comments on Gabby's mm. Instagram just for that reaction. Just to get it. Was that from your pocket? <laughs> oh, just, I love it. <laughs> No, but what could it, can we can we talk through what was going on though? So basically, yeah, we've just been absolutely hammered yeah, by by, by Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah. You were the guy to go to for cars, wasn't you? So you had like yeah. a a leasing business yeah, that yeah. you saw. Mm. Jack obviously sent you a picture of a car that he wanted. You was trying to sort it out, and then basically, 
I, how did you end up tweeting no, it? So, do, you so, know, do you know, remember on Twitter before, it, um, there was an icon at the bottom. It just went straight to your photos. So if you yes. saved the picture um, and you clicked the icon, it was your pictures in, like, the pictures in your, like, folder. Yeah, that's still the case, I think. Is it? I, I, I don't. I think so. I think yeah. so yeah. And literally, that is what happened. So it was on there. I must, I must have checked Twitter after. Um, but again, the history would suggest that I never tweeted after games. So to do that is a bit wild. Um, and literally, as I um, put the phone away, it just uploaded it. And the worst thing is, I was just like, what is going on? And then, and then what happened after that? Um, I said to you, I said yeah. to you, just pretend. Pretend you got hacked, yeah? You got hacked. I was and like, he, no. was, he was being like, so, I, what, what's the right word, Gary? When he stubborn. Just, yes, stubborn. <laughs> he was being so stubborn. No, I, I'm, not, I'm saying, Jolian, if you tweet, it happened, I, it, it was an accident, it tweeted from my pocket. Do you know how, how ridiculous that sounds? And he was yeah. like, no, but it's the truth. But I'm saying, I, I don't care, you need to lie here. <laughs> and we even had Tommy Jordan, didn't we? The yeah. um, head of comms at Villa. And he was basically saying, you cannot say this. You need to delete it or whatever. And Jolien was just being stubborn. And after that day, the abuse was just ridiculous. Yeah, I was, I was just, I, I never took it down. I would never, that would, if I had only one tweet, that would be the one that remains. So I would never. Brilliant, I, I love that. Down, yeah. uh, mm. Man after my own heart there. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that sort of stuff, but you got a bit of shit, didn't you? Yeah, it continues. And to be fair, like it wasn't just because of that. It was, it started, was it before that mix when we played Wickham? <laughs> oh my God. So I was leaving. Villa. I was going to LA Galaxy and uh, we played Wickham in the FA Cup and um, there used to be a game if he was on a bench and it wasn't at starting at Villa, it started, we started at City <laughs> so if he was on a bench, everyone would just chew chewing gum, but the game was to throw the chewing gum onto, <laughs> so you could get closest to the line so we were doing that the whole time, me and Brad Guzan and it was Wickham, playing Wickham in the FA Cup we weren't even on the pitch me and Brad, after the game the fans came down to the uh, to the dugouts and it's obviously you can get to it and we're banging on the dugout. The Meeks had to come over and um, like calm everyone down. And we had to wait for like an hour after the game because they, they was outside the bus. <laughs> so they were coming. And then, so I was like, okay, the LA Galaxy had spoke to Villa um, on the Thursday before that game and said, we want to negotiate Joel. And it was like, yeah, it was happening. And we were playing Wickham on the Saturday and West Ham on the Tuesday. So the negotiation or the conversation was supposed to happen on the Wednesday after. So we get through that game. I don't play. Then we go to the Tuesday game. Now, Meeks is on the bench and I'm starting. I'm a captain. So when they read out my name, everyone booed. <laughs> oh, I don't think I've ever been that mad, ever. Uh. Like, I was fuming. <laughs> So in my head, I was like, I'm going to prove to you today, I am not the only reason we are in this situation. We haven't won for, I think we'd lost 12 on the bounce. And we're playing, we're playing um, Crystal Palace, who are, had the best away record at the time. And then uh, we win 1-0 on a score. And the mix, because a picture of Mix coming over, and he's like, bear hugged me and that. And I, I was just fuming. I don't even think I celebrated. I was just fuming that it, like, it gone to that. And the fans just like t took it as if I was the only person that was, we was in the situation based. And then LA called the next day and um, the club were like, nah, we're gonna wanna feel, we think we can stay up. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, no. So I ended up staying, otherwise I would have had to like kick up a fuss and, and force my way. I was like, nah, I ain't doing all that. It was, it was a done deal four days ago. So I, I ended up staying at Villa for the rest of the season. And then they signed someone, yeah, I was fuming. We can't, um... Skip, we've skipped by quite a lot of your career here, so I want to bring it back. I went, Everton. Yeah. Um, you, you you had a great time there, didn't you? You were you were playing really well. You were in the PFA team of the year pretty much three years running. Mm. Yeah, that was probably personally my best performances. Um, different requirements to, to other stages of my career, but yeah, in terms of what the game is being done now, they would probably be the most glamorous performances in my career at Everton. It's a great football club, isn't it? Yeah. It definitely was. I don't know as much now. There's a lot going on, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was hard though, like moving 
from home. I, I underestimated that. Um, and then being there and it's a family club. So it, it took a while to get into the family, but once you're in, you're in. Um, so yeah, like I said, a lot of good friends that are still, still there working there, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed the, the relationship as well with the fans as well, to be, to be honest, they, they can see, they're probably the, a bunch of fans that recognize the work ethic as much as the talent. So as long as you're giving a hundred percent that they're on side. I think we've reached the stage of your career where you were signed by Manchester City under um, Mike Mark. Richards' um, <laughs> recommendation and then ended up basically taking his place. <laughs> yeah, tell them, tell, tell them exactly what happened, mate. <laughs> yeah, to be fair. No, 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 before you, before you give your defense or whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. Version. We was basically at England. We was at England. We was... I don't I th- was we sharing rooms back then or whatever it was. Nah, sometimes we share in room. my room. You was in my room a lot. Yeah, sometimes we <laughs> was whatever. And I said to Jolien, how do you feel about coming to Man City? Mark Hughes has been into me. The coaches have said that they really absolutely love you. So I've told Jolien and he was like, okay, I'll speak to Everton, see where they are, whatever may happen. Next minute you know, you're trying to screw nah. me in the deal. <laughs> no way. We didn't know that. I didn't know that until oh, yes. I, was, I joined. Selective. Until I joined. Yeah, I selective hearing. Yeah. You didn't know. So how was I supposed to know? You didn't even know. So <laughs> but we, it was a known fact after that. Yeah, Mark Hughes was trying to part X Meeks. <laughs> part X Meeks for me? <laughs> well, we didn't know. I was like, oh, no. Yeah, so Micah Richards plus 300,000 or 3 million or 30 million. Yeah, what was no, it, Micah? The fee was the same. The fee was going to be the yeah. same. It was just, you just get Micah just Richards get him, for free. Just get him out. <laughs> just get him. Yeah, all oh, right. You just yeah, get him just out. Get him well, now. Nah. But now the, um, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was like a fact after, a known fact after. It was like, yeah, Meeks was going to be part of the deal. It was like, ooh, awkward. <laughs> it worked out well. It worked out well. It did. Speaking of which... Um, Tell us about the Aguero moment, the game, particularly for you, because for obvious yeah. reasons. Yeah, I mean, we, we spoke about that last night, and it's when I can give a more sensible answer here. But if I didn't do that, then there's no Aguero moment, is there? Do you know what I mean? Like, there's, it's 3 1, it's just an easy game. So, uh, but yeah, at the time when I made the mistake, I was fine. I've made mistakes before. Uh, so, and we had to score one more goal, and we've got Aguero, we've got Eddie, and we've got Carla. So, I'm not. I'm not worried. Then we go down 2 1. And I was like, oh, this is. There must serious. have been part of your head thinking, that oh was, my God, I'm responsible. For yeah. This. Yeah. That was the moment I was like, I don't want to leave the house. Like, and it, these are the thoughts that are going through my head during the game. I'm like, I don't want to pick up the kids from school. I don't want to go to the Euros, which is happening that summer. I'm not going to be able to leave. So at that point, yeah. And then obviously, what happens, happens. And just adds to the drama, don't it? You know what I mean? It's just it's all part of it. But it's yeah, like Mike it, has told us what he felt like on the bench. <laughs> um, what, what did it feel like actually making uh, a contribution to the cause and and being on actually being on the pitch when that moment must have been? You know, before incredible. you answer this, Joel, guys, I was with Zabaleta last night at this oh, event yeah. as well. Were you? Uh, we, oh. Pablo, we went to a um, a private event for Man City yesterday, and every he's, he's such a lovely guy, but every time yeah. I look at him, I just want to <laughs> punch him. <laughs> Punch him! I want to punch him <laughs> in his oh, smug please. little face. Oh, <laughs> Mr. God! Oh, yeah. uh, the best thing that happened is that I did because because he he scored. So if I don't do that, Zaba's a big. That, Zaba's probably got a statue. If I if, so that's mm. why I did make the mistake. So Sergio, so Sergio could be the guy because Mix was my guy. So I couldn't let Zaba be the uh, stand up before that. <laughs> Uh, can you describe the emotions when when you saw that ball hit the net? I don't. I didn't see. I, I just heard the noise. I, I don't remember yeah. the build up or anything like that. I just when I think of that time, I can only remember the noise, and that was like a different sound that I'd heard before or heard after. So that is my remembrance of it. Because like when I've seen the goal and stuff now, like I wasn't part of it, but I was like the player that won it back, and it goes to Nigel and then Sergio and. I don't remember Sergio ever coming that deep. I don't remember. Well, obviously, Mario didn't make an assist before that. So, them things, I have no 
recognition of. I just remember the sound. But again, seeing the finish and then obviously seeing Sergio go on to do what he'd done. If you want someone in that scenario, it's it's him. Yeah. Describe the emotion. Oof. Draining. <laughs> I would say like, <laughs> like the relief. Full, yeah. yeah, relief. Yeah. But again, I probably wasn't aware of what how close we we never came to doing it and my involvement in that until till weeks after. Just at the moment it was just we were just drained. Um again because of how it happened. I think if you do it um and you win with eight games to go rather than having to, to come back the way we did, I think it's probably less less draining. And it was funny because I we on the anniversary of it, which was what, two years ago maybe it's two, two, two years ago. I don't know. But um we obviously the club did an event and we were speaking and I was describing that I would never if I could do it again, I would never want to win it like that again. I'd rather much win <laughs> with uh five games to go and you can celebrate and you can enjoy the last build up and and then Cheeky, I seen Cheeky and he was like, Are you sure? I was like, Yeah. And then it was the year when Gundogan scores two against Aston Villa. And I seen him after the game and he said, Yeah, I know exactly what you mean now. I'd much rather win with weeks to spare. Yeah. Without the stress. Yeah. Without all the stress. <laughs> so like, it's never like that though, football, yeah. is it? There's no, always there's always why, some yeah. pain, some suffering uh, to go through. Um, how did you two celebrate? Because I know you go <sighs> away a bit and have oh, gone. That, that's what everyone really wants. Julian, to know. can I just 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 remember you were an England coach. <laughs> <laughs> you told, I'm just gonna pull it all out and blame He, he can, he blame can say what he wants and do what he wants, but just remember you're an England coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair, that was um it was it wasn't wild, it was just long. We celebrate I think we celebrated for a week. Me and Meeks was out yeah. every day for about a week. We were we went did we go on the um we went on the parade, then it, we ended up at like some student thing um in one of the, yeah we, we was we was everywhere with our medals on yeah. by the way we was we was literally and we just met up consistently every day for like right. five days and just celebrated and just drank and mix isn't a, he's a bigger drinker now to be fair he wasn't the best drinker back then Couple of drinks, he might be sleeping. I've got pictures of him sleeping in nightclubs and all that. And he's, yeah, he's a mess. He was a mess. I've seen, it. I've seen him asleep. I've seen him asleep. <laughs> Can we uh, talk about some of our LA trips? LA trips. Oh, my Lord. The best one was the, the stag do that we went on before the start of that season. Well, we call it a stag do. It was pre season. It was pre season trip. And um, that was the the first year we'd signed Gail Cliche, hadn't we? And Samir. And Gail had naturally gravitated to us as a group. So it was like me, Meeks, Joe, Gareth, uh, Millie. Um, so when we land, Mancini, to be fair to him, I'd, I'd purposely landed on a Saturday so we could go out and then we could have the Sunday off. So we'd all gone, we was all going. Um, and to be fair to Meeks, we didn't drink pre-season because our knees were just swamped like a balloon. So we were sensible, probably the only time of the season we were sensible. And uh, we've landed and then we've gone to a party and uh, Gail has seen the manager in reception, hasn't he? And he said, what are you doing, Gail? And he's like, oh, I'm just resting. He said, no, I'll give you the day off to go and obviously spend time with the boys and stuff and integrate. And he's come to meet us. And then uh, so we've gone to this like this pool party and uh, they've ordered drinks. So, like, the waiters come and go, what drinks do you want? So me and Mixes order some waters and everyone's gone like, yeah, vodkas and beers and all that stuff. And Gail's going, what? Gail's come from Arsenal where they don't even have ketchup. No ketchup, no Coke. <laughs> and he's seen lads order vodka and he thinks they're taking the mick. So he's like, said, no, I'll have some water. And then, but he still, he generally thinks no yeah. one's drinking. And then all of a sudden these bottles have come over, champagne, vodka, and his lies have gone, oh my God. And that was it. He was in. He was in. He, was turning, he turned into an alcoholic. <laughs> Girl, oh, cliche. Yeah, he, yeah. so that like, and then literally we were there for 14 days, Mix. I think the lads went out 12, 12, <laughs> 12 nights. And, but no, I'm not just out, like, I mean, out, out. They were out, out, <laughs> out, out. And then you, like, Millie doesn't drink. You all know Millie doesn't drink. Um, a couple of them, like Gareth, can drink, but turning up to training the next day, they were at the front. They were at the front of the running. It was just mad, and it just helped us become a mad 
mad team off the field. <laughs> what about when we were sneaking back though? One of the nights we, we, we were training. Track suits, we had tracksuits. We wore our tracksuits <laughs> over our civvies, didn't we? Over our normal gear. We, left, we had to leave them in the bush. We had to leave them in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> we come downstairs in our tracksuits. Go outside. We start coming after dinner in our tracksuits. Go outside. Put our tracksuits in the bush. Have our clothes out. Come back and then yeah. get our tracksuits out of the bush and put them back up. <laughs> upstairs. Ladies and gentlemen, our new England coach, <laughs> Julian Lescott. <laughs> Oh, but to be fair, Mancini was like, he just said, just be sensible, didn't he? He wasn't like, oh, yeah. don't do anything. Yeah, that sounds pretty sensible. It was just like, don't get caught. You know what I mean? So if you, like, <laughs> I think he, I think if, if he would have caught us getting in, then we're in trouble. But yeah, me and Meeks were just like, because we, did, we didn't drink pre-season, so we was like sensible mm. ones for, for once. What about when we, we, we got pulled over by the police at, in LA? Oh my God. <laughs> that was a bad one, Meeks. <laughs> That was a bad one, man. I can't believe is this, is, that is that is that the sentence you're serving now? <laughs> is that the way in the, in the jail cell? Still there? Inside, still, inside, still bad. Oh yeah, you see the mug shot. Yeah, so because obviously we, we'd, we'd rent a car or whatever, and we take it in turns driving because again we wouldn't drink, so we just take it in turns, and the lads would just come. So we've got Nigel in the back, and um, getting pulled over. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I just don't need this. Don't need to be pulled over. I'm pre-season, probably when I shouldn't be out. Um, so get pulled over. And Nigel, Nigel De Young is in the back, steaming, saying, tell him who I am. Just tell him, I'm saying, no one cares who you are, Nigel. No one cares who you are. We're not in Netherlands. We're not in Amsterdam. No one's going to know Nigel De Young. So he, the policeman's come and he's like saying all this stuff. And Nigel's talk, I said, shut your mouth, Nigel. Shut your damn mouth in the back. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to hear you. So I'm having to give him all my information. And obviously you, you do all the tests and stuff. But again, it's proven that, yeah, I was sober as a judge. It was great. Micah Boy, Richards, we're so arresting nervous. you for robbing a living. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great times, weren't they? Yeah. they, were, they were yeah. Great times, fabulous yeah. stuff. I, I hate to go back to football, but um, <laughs> coming towards the end, you've been very generous with your time. But um, talk about you as an England player. Um, actually, I think you've got something in common with Mike. You've both scored for England, both yeah, one yeah. goal each. But mine was in a, in a uh, competition, though. Yeah, yeah. So that, I think that I worked that out as 80 goals between the four of us. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, how was your England career? How do you look back on it? Uh, massive you got honor. injured for the World Cup, didn't you, yeah. in 2010? Yeah, that was... That must that have was, been a blow. Yeah, that was a blow, to be fair. Um, and again, I, I tried I tried ever so hard to get fit. I just wasn't... I'd run out of games. So I could actually train them, but it wasn't in a position to, to take me. I wasn't that valuable to the squad. Uh, my timing probably was arguably as bad as anyone else's in regards to the, yeah, the competition I faced. Around. Yeah, like Rio and JT, arguably as good as anyone else. And then before that was Seoul. So it was like, it was an uphill battle. But yeah, like to play for England and represent the country at a major tournament and then score was... That was a tournament that Meeks refused to go to. Waldo, wow! What? What? <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm alive, Meeks. Refuse, refuse. I, didn't, I didn't refuse to go to the tournament. We've had this, we've had this story on the year before. Basically, it was when Hodgson was going to put me on standby. And then ah, I had the opportunity right. to go yeah. to the Olympics. And oh, it was, was it the Olympics? Yeah. It was Olympics year, yeah. 2012, yeah, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I and decided picked, to go uh, to it. Keep it Kelly, didn't he? Well, uh, yeah, so... Well, he came instead, should I say. He, he got called up. He was on standby. So if I would have shut my mouth, I probably would have went, wouldn't I? But yeah. Yeah, I got to go <laughs> to Idiot. <the> Olympic yeah. <laughs> Village. So <laughs> I'm not regretting. Yeah. Jolien, a, a, a little bird tells me that um, you, you're a bit of a DJ and, and you want to pursue that yeah. possibly further down the line. Oh, yeah, that is a real thing. I've, I've had real ambition to do. I had, to, I had some gigs in the summer. But when you get this call from a friend and say, do you want to be part of the England set mm -hmm. I kind of had to part of Put it on hold. Yeah. Put it on hold. Some, I've, I've got, got a son, who's a, I've got know, a, son yeah. who's a DJ, Tobias. He's, he's doing really quite well. Yeah, no. Nah, it's the, oh, it's, um, it's it, the closest thing I have to play in terms of the feeling yeah. it gives me. Yeah. yeah. Seems to be really a real buzz about it if you get it going. What kind of music is it? Not that I'll know, but... House now, like deep, deep house and stuff. So you kind of have to recognise what 
most of the, the younger generation listen to. So I grew up on on garage, but yeah, yeah. Not, there's not many people listening to that now. So, yeah, yeah. Al, Al loves a bit oh, of deep, deep house, house, don't yeah. you, Al? Deep house is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a clue. Really yeah. What do you like, Al? What's your What's your thing, Al? Uh, I like my garage, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! He likes parking his car in there. Say, yeah. Park your car in there. Storage <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Jolyon, thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's been brilliant. And we wish you absolutely all the very best uh, with England and um, and the future and give our best wishes to Lee Carsley and uh, Ashley Cole as well. Thank I'll you so it. much. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. Loved it, man. Loved that. Thank you very much. Yeah, great stuff. Uh, thank you. That's uh, it. Um, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Mm-hmm.